My guest this week is a comedian who went from social media phenomenon to household name in just two years. Mo Gilligan is a stand-up comedian who, after several years of uploading comedy clips to social media... I have chicken and chips, chicken and chips. Put the plunge in your face. Oh, I don't even care, you know. ...found national success in 2017 when he co-hosted The Big Nasty Show and presented the latest show for which he won Best Entertainment Performance at the BAFTAs. Oh, he's feeling a diversity quota. Your mum. How about that? <laughs> Since then, he's received international acclaim for his Netflix special, Momentum, and now he brings us the new documentary, Black, British and Funny. Please welcome Mo Gilligan! Hello. What's up, man? Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, man. This is so fun. I get so shy, you know, when people bring me out on shows. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I was like, woo, hi, hello. <laughs> you get shy. I get shy. I still get shy. But, because... I, but that is not the jumper of a shy man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrifying looking dog. Like, Sorry, I'm a bit shy. This <laughs> guy, not so shy. <laughs> For a bit of a second, I was like, what's on my Oh, shit, this is on my jumper. <laughs> what's lovely is the way that was ruffled up then. When you were laughing, <laughs> the belly was just kind of going like that. So it looked like, it looked like the dog was giggling. <laughs> The last time we saw each other, yes. we were in a field doing goat yoga. I remember this. Do you remember that? I do remember it. Wasn't that a like, weird day? That was a really weird day. It was... Look, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we was doing it, I was quite scared because... Because you see goat's teeth, they look like human teeth. Yes. So I was quite scared of like them biting my head or ears or something. Like yeah. That. They were all over you. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't relaxing because no. we were trying to get into these poses and then you would sort of like lie down and the goat would be like, I'm fucking that. <laughs> and <laughs> they, they kept sniffing you, rubbing you. Yeah. Nothing for me. Yeah. I felt so uneasy. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. it's about... not every day a goat tries to fuck you in a field <laughs> on telly. It's like, how are you going to react? I'm like, this isn't normal. No, like, I live in Peckham, people don't do this stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you, uh, did you go on lockdown tough as a comedian? Do you know what? I think for myself, it, I had a lot of like time to just do stuff I wouldn't normally do. Like I got to like sort out wardrobes and stuff like that. What, really? Yeah, like I had, cause some, sometimes I'm so busy where, cause I'm like, especially for me, I'm into my trainers. Like I've got a big trainer collection. So that for me was like so therapeutic of like sorting them all out, cleaning them, putting them in boxes, um, gave loads away as well. So yeah, for me, it was like, that's how I kind of felt my, my kind of sanity. I read somewhere as well that you got into baking. Yeah. Which <laughs> blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. What I loved about you, because you were on the Great British Bake Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it was between you and me as to who was the worst. <laughs> yeah. Because we've actually got your cake here. And that is... <laughs> I mean, let's not muck around, mate. <laughs> that, that looks like a tampon. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It, it looks peanut and jelly trainer cake. It sounds delicious, but... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did you say it looked like a tampon? It does look like a tampon. <laughs> look at that. Look, that's been ripped out quickly. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did it taste like? It tasted really good. Like... <laughs> I mean, to be, to be honest, mine wasn't much worse. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> The perfect Sunday on the sofa. What, so what was your... What, what is that? What was in it? <laughs> so what they, what they said is, they, they said, what makes you happy? Yeah. And for me, it was just having a relaxing Sunday. That's me on the right. Um, and that is my wife uh, on the left. <laughs> and that thing that's sort of like... Is that someone... Is, you've killed someone. Is that someone dead? <laughs> that's my dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that mess in the corner <laughs> is the TV, and we're watching the TV. Okay. Do you know what was? It took me two and a half hours to make that. Yeah. And Prue genuinely yeah. didn't eat it. She didn't eat it. Didn't even. But she walked past it. Have you ever like served food to a cat that's just gone? <laughs> nah. Like that. <laughs> two and a half hours. I nearly had a breakdown. <laughs> now, we we should chat. You've got a documentary out. Yes. Which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, genuinely. yeah, yeah. It's called Black British and Funny. Yeah. Um, it's on Channel Four. Yes. What inspired that? For me, it's like especially in being in a place of comedy. And the, the route that I had come from through comedy, I didn't, I didn't go to Edinburgh, mainly one, because I couldn't afford it. And when, my, when I kind of did go to Edinburgh, I was like, right, this is really cool, but it's not really for me. And my route came from the black comedy circuit. 
And then what kind of happened where I kind of had this transition of kind of doing some videos, done the tour and then kind of got on TV. And sometimes I started reading articles and be like, oh man, like, like Drake, Drake discovered this guy. He was on TV. He was working in retail three years ago. So I was like, that's not the story. That's yeah. not how I kind of got to the position I am now, really. And especially because there were so many people that had come before me and kind of paved the way, it was really important to shine a light on this amazing circuit that, you know, like sells out the Hackney Empire like three weekends in a row. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I, I think for me, it's like, I've been really like fortunate to kind of be able to, you know, like doing like, all, all comics would always say, cool, I want to kind of have a special. I want to do a special. Then, you know, you get to a chance where you're like, cool, I'm getting, I'm, I'm front of my own TV show. But I was like, I kind of want something to last and has some some legacy and has some kind of depth to it. Yeah. And that's kind of why I kind of shifted my attention. Like, that's why I really, really, really want to do this documentary. Yeah. And just to kind of celebrate some of these comics, because for me, they're my icons. They're the people that I first seen going yeah. to a comedy club. And who are these people? Who are these people? Oh, so you got, you got Slim, Angie Lamar, uh, Richard Blackwood, uh, Eddie Caddy, Kane Brown, um, even like for like people that I kind of was in the circuit with, Travis J, uh, so many, Axel Blake. But now what's really cool is you've got these young up and coming. Why do you, why'd you think, like, a lot, like, because I know a lot of the people you just listed there, yeah. with the exception of Richard, yeah. wh why do you think so many of them didn't get the mainstream success that someone like you's had? I don't know, sometimes I, I definitely think it is a, a one in, one out system. I remember when I was kind of, when I first got my show on Channel 4, I, I looked back and I was like, right, who had shows before me? And it was like Richard Blackwood and, and Lenny Henry, and that mm. was it. And I think for me, I remember being that young kid <clears throat> kind of staying up late to watch Richard Blackwood's show. And I think that's why it was really important to do this documentary because there is that young kid who's watching me. Absolutely. It's really important to kind of... Yeah shine light on these other com these other comics. Who were your idols growing up? Definitely Slim. Slim was the first ever comic I'd seen. That's the first ever stand-up show I went to. And he was so funny because I'd always got a lot of my comedy from American comics. So I say like America, they export entertainment. So it was like, oh man, look, you've got Chris Rock on there and Dave Chappelle. But for me going to that show, I was like, I feel like I know this guy. Right. He's talking about things that I can really relate to. Yeah. And this is really funny. Yeah. And I think, that's the one thing that I really took away from watching Slim as like a 19 year old kid. Yeah, I was yeah. like, right, I like this guy. I feel like I can just meet this guy in the street in my barbers, you know? Well, we've actually got a clip of the two of you together, actually. This is from the doc. So Slim, how would you say it feels when, let's say you've just done Bad Boys of Comedy. It's been sold out, so that's six shows, two on Friday, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. And then the next day is Monday morning. You go back to your day job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so to me, I, I kind of live, I, I, I call it a, a Clark Kent and Superman lifestyle. So at the weekend, I'm like Superman. Yeah. Yeah, all these gigs, you know what I mean? Superhero at these gigs. And mm. in the week now, it's back to Clark Kent, glasses on. Yeah. I do a normal job, drive a van. But how does the Clark Kent feeling feel? Because you, you're you like, hang on a sec, if I wasn't a black guy, Yeah. I could be Superman all the time. All the time. And I could be Clark Kent when I wanted to. Yeah. Not because I have to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like how you put that. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly <laughs> like that, definitely. <laughs> Do you sort of feel like, because of the success you've had, yeah. it's, it's like your duty to bring others through? I wouldn't say bring others through, but definitely highlight the circuit that got me to the got place you there, that I am. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because if anything, it's these comics that done it before me. Yeah. Um, before there was things like social media where you could just say, do you know, I'm gonna do some stand-up, but jump on YouTube and create a channel and I can, I can get another audience yeah, like that. Yeah. They, some of these comics didn't have, a, have that stuff at their disposal. Um, so definitely for me, it was definitely to shine a light and celebrate this circuit, mm. um, which is like round the corner from the majority of people. Yeah. You know. Why like, do you think, because it's such a big circuit, but it's not part of sort of mainstream entertainment, mm -hmm. is it? Do you know what I mean? I wonder why that is. Well, I think it's just like, if you think of representation on TV, I think, I always, it, for me, like whenever I go to Heathrow, right, they've got this beautiful thing of like, like, like it's, like, it's really like diverse and you've got people from all different backgrounds just when you get off a flight. And I think, you know, this country, we always really pride ourselves on how diverse we are. But then when you look at TV, it doesn't always replicate that. Mm. So I think if you don't see it on TV and it's not, within the mainstream, then you, you don't know if this gig happens, you know? And I think that's, that's, the, that's the difference, really. It's fascinating.
And it's not just this as well. You're doing everything. So you're doing the Masked Singer. Yes, doing the Masked Singer. Which is yeah. mental. You, you won <laughs> yeah. a BAFTA, which is fucking amazing. Oh, cheers, man. You're also doing uh, the Big Breakfast. Yes, the Big Breakfast is coming back. I'm doing the Big Breakfast. Who are you doing that with? Um, I don't know if I can say just yet, but can I you, remember... Can you give us a hint? I can't. I'm not allowed. Not through mime? No, not even through mime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got to be a lady. Could possibly be. I can't confirm more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, 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 um, oh, give me one clue. I, I can't, I literally can't give you a clue still. Is it Michelle Obama? <laughs> God, it's Michelle Obama. <laughs> that'd be great. That'd be, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd be fucking amazing. You, <laughs> yeah. Michelle Obama, Zig and Zag. <laughs> Just sort of stuff there. Is Zig and Zag coming back? They could possibly. <laughs> I, 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 there's so much secrecy that I, the, the thing is, I just <laughs> I don't want to say this is happening, that's happening, because yeah. it, it could still change. It's still coming out okay. next year, so. What, what else is on the horizon? Anything else? <laughs> I think, yeah, that, and then we've got um, the tour. Yeah. So when, the, is the, when is the tour start? So the tour is in September. Um, so, it, September 2021. 2021. And the, it, it, it was going to be a world tour. Well, it still could be, possibly, yeah. but, I, you know, it was, I, it was really interesting, because people was like, oh, you must be gutted not doing a world tour. And I'm like, there's bigger things going on right now. Yeah. Like, I'm not... Like, it, things happen, innit? Yeah. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, really? I'll still be... Yeah, because... I wish me... I was like that, man. I was absolutely gutted. Was you, yeah. I was, yeah. Well, I was, I was literally... I was in Denmark when it kicked off. And I was, oh, so you was kind of touring. I was ready. Oh, like, I you see. know when you're just like... <laughs> like uh, yeah. Gigs in Germany and Holland and then... And then it finished. God, I miss it. I think that's the cool thing about like, being a stand-up. You know, it's kind of like performing at a club. People go there with troubles, things going on, work, etc. And then for that hour, they mm -hmm. just kind of forget and just have a, just it's have a bliss, laugh. It's bliss, isn't it? You're just sort you of know? lost in the laughter. Yeah. It's amazing. And laughter's contagious as well. The amount of times I've been at a gig and someone's laughing, like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like, what, it's such a fun experience. What's fascinating about laughter is the best, you know when you're laughing with mates? Yeah. And you don't quite know why you're laughing, but you're because your mate's got a goofy laugh, you're lost in that laugh. And then yeah, you're yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah, yeah. And you never know why you, <laughs> and you just thought, it's just, it goes on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. What's your favourite type of laugh, though? My favourite type of laugh is the woman that can't quite control what's spluttering out of her face. <laughs> you know that? I'm talking about grunts. I like it like, <laughs> like that because oh, yeah, yeah. they don't want to make that laugh. It's like tickling a dog. That's the bit. That's the bit. <laughs> You've got them right. Do you know what I mean? How about you? What's your, what, what gets my, you? I like the laugh that... My favourite laugh is when the laugh dies down, but you can tell someone's still thinking of it. Yeah, yeah. So like... <laughs> Uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that is the, I think yeah. that's the best laugh. That's, that's my favourite laugh. And they do that lovely thing of just mentioning the end of the joke. Like, yeah. uh, uh, mm. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Oh, God. Let's go do a gig. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the fantastic Mo Gilligan! Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.